The Namaqua Silver Sands hiking trail was the brainchild of Dana Swanapu. The trail takes place in the coastal area of the Namaqua National Park, a fairly recent addition to the existing park due to a donation of 34,000 hectares from De Beers. This coastal area is between the Hrun and the Spochrafir and is 50 kilometers of undeveloped land. There are a number of camping sites along the coast, very basic. Long drop toilets and no washing facilities. All water has to be brought in and therefore used very sparingly. A glass of wine, a book, sunset over the sea, not something we experience at home, was all one could wish for at the end of the day and then, for others, the work is never done. <laughs> Lana, you're not very fond of this, but you need, if, tonight you eat rice. And... Uh, oh man, it's been hot. Oh my um, God. Here is our... This is about it, part three point And where did the name Silver Sands come from? Because it was of one photo taken on the second day's hike when the sun was shining through the mist and it was on that, that, that stretch of sand with the rays coming through the mist. Yeah. If you go look on, on, my, on, my, on my Facebook, you will pick up that picture where this race, two guys that were, who were walking in front of us, we were taking the picture from behind of them with a race on it. And that, that was just solar sense. With the long sandy roads, a 4x4 is necessary and in some parts of the park, essential. What a privilege to spend a few days in the park. No cell phone reception endless beaches and beauty all around. Every day was different, from the varied roads to the different beaches, some long and wide, others full of pebbles and others with meter-thick mussel shells. The geology of the coast is bizarre. We'd suddenly come across great outcrops of white quartzite or wriggling snakes of bright pink running through ancient granite. Life on and in the sand 
was also varied. Snakes, dung beetles, African wildcat, and the elusive tortoise. Lunch was always welcome, and our pat course packed a surprise. Dana certainly knew how to spoil us at the pickup point. Cold beer, or panakuk, depending on the weather. Dana is passionate about his trail and the area. His stories are endless. And if you ever get the opportunity to walk this part of the coastline, do yourself a favor and take it. On the penultimate day, we were to see more evidence of the region's tempestuous nature. When we were transferred to Hondukluppai, it didn't take much imagination to see how the bay got its name. The famous dogstone may have lost its nose in a storm, but it's still pretty distinctive. As we explored the coastline to the south, we learned of the fate of various ships that had been to sail in the rocks. And after a brief stop at the shipwreck of the Aristia, retired for lunch at a local restaurant. The safari ended the following day with a wine tasting and a lunch in Lutzville before we hit the road back home. Our minds and cameras full of images of this starkly beautiful frontier region. 